Evening, wherever you are, welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 414. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to review the answers uh, given on uh, uh, the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have David Razan. David uh, is a leading internet marketer. He's based in the sunny south of the UK. Um, he uh, can be found at davidrosam.com. Richard Hearn. Uh, Richard Hearn is based in Thailand. Uh, Richard uh, mainly looks after Tier 1 sites, and uh, we're very glad to have him with us. Um, Tim Kappa is based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Um, and Masataki Wasa is based in Wimbledon. Uh, he is um, um, he's webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's also a Google product expert on the AdSense community. Tim is a Google product expert on the Google My Business uh, community. All right, um, we have um, 12 questions uh, tonight. Uh, let me uh, put this window on. Okay. All right. Okay. Our, our first um, question. Uh, um, it's from Conjal Chorhan. Um, it's titled, is EAT just related to author or does it also apply to the brand? Um, i.e., um, if a brand name gets unlinked or linked um, mentions, then is that EAT optimization or does that just help with brand mentions? Now, I know Tim Kepp has got a bit to say about this, but he must yeah, be getting Tim, Tim coffee. answered this, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I mean, I'd say Tim is grabbing a coffee. I think that the honest answer here is that we actually don't really know. And that various people have surmised various different things, but that we, we don't know. And Google probably doesn't want us to know. Um, could it apply to the brand and by brand could it apply to the website I think that they've hinted at times like that there could be there could be some metrics that are viewed at a site level with this regard so the, I think there's been some hints that like if, if, if sections of your site maybe have content which would be your money or your life that other parts of your site which aren't your money or your life will also be held to the high to, to the, the high measurement that will be applied to your money or your life. And they've mentioned about maybe splitting sites off in those cases. Um, it, it's, it's very hard to know, but at the brand level, probably not. Like brand is probably an entity and it's probably at a site level maybe. And certainly it's probably at, at, at a document level. And I'm sure there is some metric which is applied to authors for sure because they do obviously look at, at authors that write in different places and they seem to have some sort of scoring mechanism for that but it's all very vague and the all that we have to go on is is the is the the quality raters guideline guidelines and what what googlers have said and they're very circumspect i think about letting this information out uh, that, that's my opinion i think like like tim's answer I think he, what, what did Tim say with some of this? Um, like Tim also, he said, yeah, that applies to the site itself. Um, but I think that it's, it's, it's vague enough. Like we don't know the particulars, but I'm quite sure that Tim's answer is probably correct. All right. Yeah, so I, I agree with, I agree with you. Itself. Hmm. If Google wanted us to know anything, they wouldn't have employed Gary Illies. Uh, I think that's probably a little bit unfair. I'd say 
that, like do you know what you have to like i mean it's funny now this is going off topic a little bit but you you do have to appreciate that they've become very like those guys who work who are the the, the front facing guys like they have to be very careful what they say and you know it must be very very difficult for them to to deal with this like you do see them sometimes you can sort of you can see them stopping and you know that in their mind they're saying to themselves what do i need to be careful of saying here um and they they do give a reasonable amount of information but but yeah gary is a little bit different from john that's for sure yeah um i mean john fronts up every week and uh, um answers them as they you know ask me anything if you like and um yeah, yeah. I, I, whereas uh, no, I had a run-in with Gary. He tried. He tried to tell me that I, I, I didn't know what I was talking about. Um, anyway, maybe he's right. Okay, let's um, I possibly comment. <laughs> Tim is back. Tim might have something to add. Ah, uh, well, yeah, the seat. Eat, eat, eat. Look, um, <laughs> the thing with EAT is, I think it's just a reinforcement uh, on a whole to provide, um, depending on the type, and so obviously I always kind of refer to local, but uh, providing some kind of authoritative understanding to, to the business itself. If it's a if it's a chiropractor, orthopedic, or if it's a surgeon or something like this, um, your the, the 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 doctor's pages should correctly reference them where they're trained. Uh, does that country have medical licenses? So uh, for the user to click through, double check that they are actually registered with that country's you know medical board um same again if it's a plumber uh on the about page are you registered with the relevant uh, you know the re relevant trade as associations or if for example in the uk you're a you're, you, you know you're a you're a gas engineer are you registered on the gas safe register can they click through check your membership number and see that you are registered so it applies for me in local it it you know it's good for the one the user to be able to confirm or validate for themselves your business's um, credentials and at the same time uh, leaving it out of this but it 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 provides that validation to uh, or not valid if validation to the user but Google can also then follow these things without having to guess at this business name this doctor is oh it's that guy that we found over there that you're just joining the dots you are providing that uh, relevant um, you, you know uh, information to the user that 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 that, that, that trust based signals that you are who you say you are you are um, uh, you know, it's joining up the dots, and and that's what I see it from a local business point of view. Of course, if you, you know, you say to a brand, I mean, I don't know if it's a clothing brand. Well, I don't know how specifically that would apply in that sense. Um, maybe if you say you guys are ethically sourced, then you would probably be linking through to your ethically sourced cotton production. Uh, website where you, where the brand is listed or something like that in that sense um but that's that's how i view it in terms of uh local business thank you tim and thank you richard all right let's move on to uh our next question um this is from christina hutaso it's titled does the domain extension like co really affect the search engine optimization. Richard, I, I think you uh, said something on this. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't really, well, does it really? It, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, 
So CCTLD are country level, top level domains. And in those cases, like if you use and, and .co, as you mentioned, is 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 for Colombia. And generally speaking, Google will will align search results in a particular country um, to result to, to websites they, they determine are from that country. And one of the, the, the signals they use for that is the is the TLD. But there is also an exception to the, to the rule in that there's a, a number of CC TLDs like .co, which people have used as general TLD, which is GTLD. And in light of that, Google actually makes exceptions for those and allows you to geo-target those anywhere you want. And I just put in a link to the to the page that lists them. .co, uh, .io. There's a few that are are generally they're generally used by by websites, but actually they are CCTLDs. So, but does it matter for SEO? Actually, I'm a big believer that no, that Google doesn't doesn't really care at all about the the TLD. They just care about the site. I think they move well past caring about the TLD. Apart from that geo geo targeting aspect of it, there's no yeah. other benefit. Looking back through history, wasn't dot co um, um, because uh, like it, it was initially to be uh, the um, TLD for Colombia? It's, it still is. Um, but what? Um, um happened was that they allowed too many spammers onto it they, they had uh, do you remember that um, yeah i do remember and there were certain tlds where google they took action against them yeah wholesale action against them and um, but I, I i that was back in the day like that's really back in the day for us and um, i don't i don't believe there's much m many more cases of that since Hmm. I think that's because obviously you've got uh, the the generic TLDs came into play, and some of those were really cheap. So obviously those could be spammed to death. Um, and I think in general the price of CCTLD has been going up gradually over the last 10, 20 years. Um, those prices have been increasing, and therefore the spammers aren't going to use them. They're going to pick up something they can get for ninety nine cents. Yeah, got info. Yeah, dot info. I mean, it's a really old TLD, but yeah, it's. I, I, yeah, you don't see too many of them these days. Legacy sites. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's um, move on to number three on our list from Joseph Benstow. And Joseph um, wants to know should all of the images have the same address? He said, when doing local SEO and geo tagging your images, should all the images have the same address, brackets, your business address, or should it be different, like different places uh, where you took the photos? And Tim, you, you asked, why are you geotagging images? Uh, unfortunately, I think Joseph has been reading the uh, wrong uh, articles on how, you know, um, so, Joseph, um, geotagging images unfortunately doesn't work. Um, and you can probably quickly, easily just do a test on yourself for this. Um, take one page on your site, do absolutely nothing to it, and that includes no interlinking to it or anything like that. Um, geotag the image or couple of images on that and then just see if that actually pops you up. It, unfortunately, it's not going to do anything for you. Um, so, yeah, you don't need to geotag images. Just give them a proper reference, uh, you know, just the usual proper um, file name of, of what the image is. Um, you can use uh, old text on the image also and brand that up. Um, but that's about it. Yeah. I'm just curious about this one. Um, because he states that should all the images have the same address or should it be different? Like, um, should it be different, like different places you took the photos? So he's in effect trying to geotag many different 
No, he's taken yeah, he's just thinking about his business's address. To a business. So yeah. no, that's not going to work. Of course, you could, you know, you could mark up by using schema, using both where you've taken the photograph and of what you've taken. You can, I think, geotag both. Um, but I don't think that really helps in image search at all. Does anyone know, and this is, I don't know the answer. Does anyone know though, do they, do Google do something where they, they will track the location of where you've taken images for maps? And if so, do they use EXIF data from like, you know, when your phone takes a, a photo, very often the camera apps, they, they geotag in the EXIF. Yeah, so it, I think it depends on your phone setting. Um, so if you allow um, your photo app to add location mm -hmm. data, and then you might be prompt, and if you upload those to Google Photos, and then you go to Google Maps, and then to the Contribute section of Google Maps, then they will be auto suggest. You know, would you like to upload these photographs? I think those are based on EXIF data the location data um, of the images. And if you say, okay, yeah, I want to put all these uh, images up, then um, they would be pinned, if you like, to that um, date. In I, don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I, um, I don't think they use exit data personally. I know once things are uploaded to Google, they strip it out. They yeah. strip it out. They strip it out from maps and they strip it out from GMB and stuff like that. Okay. The reason I say I don't think they specifically do is because if you've walked down the street and taken multiple images, it very, very often actually suggests, you know, when you go into your, um, you go into, it'll say, hey, add your images. And then you'll actually look at the images and it will have picked up a location um, that has been, so it won't actually add it to the actual place you are. It will rely on a pin location to then say, hey, add these. And that's why so many people will be, have been on a beach and then it'll just say, hey, add your photos. And people without actually reading it, or select deselecting or selecting, they will actually have added them to like the beach or to a hotel or whatever, and realize that it's literally taken everything within X amount of area that they thought they were in that area of, and just lump it in. And that's why you get so many weird ass photos being added. Yeah, it's a lot a of the time. Tough. Yeah. So I don't think if they were using EXIF, they would actually add it to an area but maps adds it to a pinned location, something with an actual uh, uh, listing, whether it be landmark or business or, do you know what I mean? If something it has to have a specific pin. So I, I don't even think it uses exit. I think it just takes the, and you can see it, you walk down the street, um, and you can see it all the time. It'll go, hey, how, how you know? How did you enjoy this business? And you're like, I never went in that business. But because you happened to walk past, and they had free accessible Wi-Fi, and your phone made that sick that connection whilst you were walking past, it thought you were freaking there, but you were never there. You never yeah. went in. It's just the nearest one it could pick up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. But was um. That's you can, you can with, um, oh no, actually even Street View doesn't use EXIF. Street View, you have to select the area first on, you have to zoom in, select the street or location you're at, oh, okay. and then take your images and things, and then it will put it into that where you are, that you've selected. And, and uh, that might what? have changed, because I thought I, I thought, it sort of uploaded and then sort of pinned at the um, latitude, longitude. So you could get to the number. Yeah, I don't bigger. know. But that's, that, I haven't used Street View for a while, but 
which certainly in the past I think it worked that way because I certain pins I think um, were uh, very much longitudinal latitude. So they may strip the other exif data, but they might keep the longitude and um, latitude data. But I'm, ooh, I may be wrong. I haven't been doing this for a while, so I'm not entirely sure. I'm just curious if they have different ways of ranking images for local as opposed to you know generic image search. That's just my curious. I'm 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 purely curious. I don't know the answer. I'm just curious whether there is any different <coughs> signals used for images. And I don't even know whether images are a big part of local, but it's just curious hey. how, how they might rank them. Hmm. Hang on. There's interestingly. Uh, you see, so I've just picked an image I took in London last weekend. They've changed it slightly around now. It'll say select a place. Uh, it'll drop down. And then it's given me like, it's literally given me two, four, six. It's given me eight options to select where it was. Winston Churchill statue, Nelson Mandela statue, the Tesco Express, Jan Smas statue Westminster or the Viking Falcon yeah. Palmerston statue. Let me, let me, let me, I wonder whether you, do, I don't know what, what settings you have. Do you allow the, ge, to, the, the geolocation to be applied to the image or at, and at what level do you use GPS or do you use, allow it to use the Wi-Fi points that it, you know, and all the rest of it that it's pinging all over the place? I'm just wondering whether it figured out that you were near to these places based on what it was pinging your phone yeah but that's what i mean i'm literally selecting the image and the yeah. and the phone is going uh, uh these are what we think they are do you think is it is that based on the image itself that it's saying we think this image is no hang on, let me see I, I took one in my office today it knows exactly where it are and still it hasn't it's not it's not giving you any any Suggestions. No. Location. Fucking hell. Was it? It's even offered me. It's given me where I've been. So if you, mm, if you go to um, Google Photos, if you've uploaded to Google Photos, and if you go to that particular image and then see the data, it would show the, you know, it right. would have a sort of map with longitude, latitude data. Um, yeah, but that's so, a private, isn't it? That's a that's your private image. Yeah, so yeah. then the question is, when you upload that to Maps from Google Photos, obviously the exact location might be deleted at that point, but that's used for the suggestion. I, I can guarantee you that Google keeps it somewhere. <clears throat> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, they keep it somewhere, yeah. but. Definitely know that they do not chuck it in the exact place that you took the photo because no. that's the reason why just so many images are wrong on businesses because mm -hmm. it'll say it'll it'll lump a whole group of them in and then like you'll have an image of someone eating a burger in the restaurant, the actual place where you were, and then next minute you'll have a picture of I don't know, uh, someone having their nails done and you're like, what? And you can see it's the same person. They were in two separate businesses. Yeah. So they might round it down to a few meters. And then I don't know how large it is, you know, because the GPS would tell you to about, I don't know how many centimeters, right? Um, but by the time that it's uploaded, it's probably blurred to a few meters internally. You know, it might not be externally available, but at least sort of internally, they might do that. Mm. I, I remember uh, a Dumb SEO Questions episode where um, it was discussed that to make a hotel more popular, um, you just get a, a busload of people and make sure they've got their phones with them. Yeah, but that, so if you had listened to that actual freaking conversation, Mr. Monroe, <laughs> they all need to have maps on and then they all need to get to the location and select the are you here and you click yes so it all fucking knows you're there <laughs> mr monroe 
There you have their general exhibition sticker. Um, <laughs> and then it would, you know, then people would look it up in Google Maps and it'd say it's very busy, so no one turns up. Yeah, yeah. You take them around at four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> what about the little bloke with the trolley and the, and the hundred iPhones that hanging off it? Well, yeah, if you do that, unfortunately, Google will close the street because they'll think there's traffic jam. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the next story. Or is, there more, is there more to, to, to dig out of this one? No? Okay, let's go. This is from Chris Green. He's looking for advanced search engine optimization tactics. He's come to the right place. Um, Chris said, hi, guys, looking for advanced SEO tactics on page, off page, beyond the basics to further improve the rankings and organic viability of location pages like this. And he gives an address. I'm not going to try and type, but I can see that he's working in Australia, though. Um, okay. Uh, he gives his address to a company, uh, sorry, a, a, a a health fund, Booper. Um, let me see what else he has to say. No, that's it. This guy, by the way, he he overlaps with the with the the question we had about the first question we had about eat, because obviously this is health related. So it's 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 useful that he considers that. Um, I don't know whether this is whether that that site mentioned is his real client. I, I would sort of hope it's not, because it probably doesn't look the optics of him asking the question and using their site may not be ideal. No problem asking, but if it is his client, he might want to change that in case they see. Uh, yeah, I mean, I you know think about what is what what the, what the customers are looking for there. Um, like I don't know. I'm not familiar enough with dentistry to know what people are searching for, but but I'm sure they're probably searching for cost guides, uh, treatment guides. You know, those sort of things are, are probably ways to try and to try and rank for stuff rather than ranking for branded search. I'm sure he's rank he's trying to rank for like dentists near, and I don't know. Like Tim might have some more ideas because it is probably quite local. No, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> in the UK. No, I think it's done. I think they've done a, a very nice. Um, I think they've done a very nice job there. You know, I I, I didn't like uh, that. I looked at mobile and I thought their template, the the, the structure of their template, wasn't great. It's it, it's just that like there, I it looked like to me their sidebar was getting injected above the content of the page, which wasn't ideal. I thought, but that was the only. I mean, I I thought they'd done a pretty good job there as well. Uh, the only thing, like your structured data, there's a, a lot of duplications in that, and the only one thing, like just a off off piece thing that I'm just seeing it is. You're calling it Booper Dental, but you're not calling it the Morfitt Vale Dental Clinic. Which I know, like, you know, that is your actual, you know, I know it's Booper Dental, but, you know, you should really, um, you know, specify the actual name of it because I'm guessing, you know, even your, uh, if you've got any citations, it should be referencing that. Uh, as such a um, couple of things i mean i would probably link your actual your dentists through i'm sure they must have an actual dental page for them like that's it ah uh, no 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 you don't uh -huh. mm, yeah, and like your oral health therapist nothing links through to their um nothing links through to their main page, which I'm sure they must have. I mean, I don't know about like Australia, but obviously in the UK, dentists are also registered with a, you know, um, and they, they need to have a medical registration license and number. Um, 
that would be handy for people to link through. Just remember, it's also handy because uh, the, <laughs> there's things coming out now, like uh, rec, you know, rate your dentist, rate your surgeon, rate your doctor. Um, yeah, they, you know, like all your images. Fine. Yeah, you know, it includes the name. Uh, you've images of your uh, dentists. Cool. You know. Um, you've got. Yeah, you know, you've got directions to it. Uh, no, you don't. Uh, you've just yeah, the got directions the were more, It says directions too, but it's actually just an like it looks like a location type of. Like it's quite good yeah. to, see, to give people directions. If you're coming from here, go this way. If you're coming from this point, go. Yeah, that yeah, way. yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Um, the only weird thing is. Uh, something good. very weird is I denied allowing to use my location on the site and it's actually displaying a local Bupa dental clinic to me in your map in bed, right, in the UK on the, on the site. So if any person denies and and a lot of people do not li like allowing a site to view its location and will just hit block you are now sending them to their nearest Bupa dental clinic and it may not be yours from your own site so that's like a big freaking no-no that should be a, a hard in bed you should but hang on a minute. Do you know what? It, could it be that it's actually a Bupa global account for the map embeddings? Because Bupa uh, are global, so it may be like yeah, yeah, yeah. That what they're doing is they're using the exact same one globally across Bupa, like Bupa in Thailand or everywhere, you know. So maybe yeah, they have one well, central account. Me, yeah, quick way to test that. Let me. Let's let's change my location i'm guessing they have a database of all the bupa clinics globally and they make this available to all the country level bupa companies and they say here's something like yeah. you can use with their with their guidelines well tim's looking at that uh, richard um Tell me, um, uh, there's a domain, goldcoastdentist.com. Mm. Um, it's 18 years old, never had a site on it. Mm -hmm. Is it worth anything? I don't know what, like, I mean, I, I don't know how big Gold Coast is. Like, it would really depend on, on how many dentists there are in Gold Coast and whether Gold Coast is actually local enough. I, 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 I'm not familiar with the, with the area. Would it have any... Is it .com or .com that are you or .com? I'm guessing it probably wouldn't have as much value as the .com .au because most people would mm -hmm. probably want to have the AU domain. It could have some value, but like, how liquid would it be? You know, it's just be look at the draw if someone wanted to have it. It could be worth trying to reach out to a few people. Hmm. Okay, will we move on from this one, guys? Tim's still looking up Bupa Global. <laughs> do, you, do you want to hold for a moment, Tim? No, that's fine. Um, that's something that they should look at. Um, I know, yeah, I know it's Bupa, but I'm guessing, uh, and I know that Global, but I'm guessing each one sort of has their own budget and, blah, 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 and you, you know still don't want to be sent sending it to your next the the next relevant group clinic just because someone did not want to allow you to track their location you know you mentioned about the citations and the proper name mm -hmm. of the clinics i know yeah. in australia you've got things like abn isn't it abn australian business number and it's just again things like that might be useful to have as well especially if this was franchises that got rolled up 
which it, do you think is it do you, is that what you think it is tim that it's it's franchises or do you think that Booba owns them all or what do you reckon um i don't know uh, uh i'm i'm guessing it is a franchise kind of model i don't think Booba would own like uh, actually i'm not entirely sure mm. i mean it may vary from country to country i don't know but but yeah. anyway there's definitely stuff like tim was saying like you know about getting the 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 dentists if they have professional qualifications and i'd say in australia there probably is is a website like australia is pretty good for for the digital stuff from the government i think like so there probably is a website they can go to and show their their qualifications and like i said the abn i know there's websites from for the abn stuff and i know there's stuff for tradies I know like obviously a dentist isn't exactly a tradie but i know that they have the licensing information for all the, the you know the the electricians and all that is available on a website in australia so they can use that as well i'd say okay moving right along this one is from interestingly Jerry. that uh Sorry, Tim, go ahead. Just, yeah, yeah, just, just, just interestingly, they, they've got a lot of dentists in there. They've got the Southern Dental, Dental Center. They've got even real estate, leased medical and consulting properties. Yeah, so uh, their citations don't look, they, they do use different things. Like, um, yeah, it could get confusing. Anyway, yeah, that's me. I'm just, yep. Yeah rambling okay. so so jerry lie wants to know um what should be the priority in terms of actionable plans um jerry said please advise that we all know that search engine optimization is a journey uh there's a lot of things that need to be done and it is a relative concept in terms of what you are doing and what your competitors are doing in your field i guess my question is if your employer um, wants a short-term two weeks by two weeks clear-cut roadmap, tell him he's dreaming. Um, what should be the priority in terms of actionable plans? Result-wise, within the first two weeks, what is something you should promise in terms of immediate result? Um, and what is something you shouldn't promise just yet? Because it depends. He's happy to pay for some amount of consultants fees. Please let me know. The thing is, he doesn't have to pay here. So this is this is just something, Jerry. Like that, I just you know. Uh, so let's say this person's come to you and said, "Okay, what can you do in two weeks?" And let's just say it's, um, you know, it's a pretty new site. I don't know. It's got only a handful of pages on it, blah, 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 blah. But you check on, you check on like when, you know, in Search Console, when those pages were visited and they were only visited, you know, like uh, maybe the home page was visited fairly, you know, within three or four weeks. Um, but some of the internals were only visited three, two, three months ago because it's, it's new. It's not really, you know, that's not updated regularly. There's no new con con stuff for Google to come back and find. So just in that base level term, you coming up with something for two weeks and Google like doesn't see fit to visit it in three or four weeks, like nothing would ever that you ever did on site would be updated within that time. Obviously you can, you know, <laughs> resubmit page. But what I'm saying to you, Jerry, is that like you saying something done in two weeks and Google doesn't come and visit it back for three weeks. Well, then you've just kind of lost. I don't know if you've said two weeks, you've just like the boss goes, well, what did you do in two weeks? And I'm like, well, I did all of this. And they're like, well, I can't see shit in two weeks. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like two weeks no 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 like yeah. two months maybe <laughs> if somebody asked me as you know i'm old and no longer competitive but uh, uh if somebody asked me that uh, i would say um well i'd spend the first uh, half of it waiting for your check to arrive <laughs> yeah that 
yeah, the th thing is, um, if this is any kind of organic activity, it ain't going to happen in two weeks, of course. But uh, you could always buy some ads, buy some clicks with ads, get some people to the site. Um, you know, that's that's what you'll you'll get in two weeks. All right, we're moving on. Any Thomas uh, asks, would a basic search engine op optimization be enough uh, to get a decent ranking? And he said, I have a website that I use mainly as a portfolio slash gallery site um, that I update once a month. If I do all my basic technical and on-page uh, search engine optimization tasks, um, would this be enough to get a decent ranking? Is there anything else I need to be aware of that could help other than creating blog content? Thanks. Well, it's it strikes, you know, it's, this is the this is the, the classic I depends answer. Uh, it depends answer. Um, you can probably get a ranking for any Thomas fine art or whatever your business is or whatever your website is um so yeah that that's fine but um you know you that's that's all fine and dandy if you've got the brand awareness for people to search uh on annie thomas fine art and find your your website so let's say um you're trying to rank for um, I don't know, landscape paintings. Uh, that's going to be a sod. Um, so what is it you're doing? What is it you want to sell? Um, what is it that, um, you know, is, is there, um, do you have a, uh, do you have a, a physical presence? Are you exhibiting in a gallery? Um, do you have a, a storefront? Um, there's all sorts of things here. Um, so it's very, very difficult to say what you should be doing. But uh, as Richard says, probably doing uh, the basics once a month is not going to get you anywhere over and above any Thomas Fine Art or whatever you, what is you are, whatever it is you are. So, um, yeah, it's uh, doing the basics doesn't get you very far. Um, You've got to do some thinking. You've got to understand the market online for whatever it is you're you're selling, um, and you need to understand what what people are buying. Um, I'm not sure I can be any more specific than that. Well, I think the answer to their question is no. I mean. A decent ranking means to me that you're bringing in traffic that's going to make you money. Um, and I don't see that happening with, you know, we don't, we can't see the site and it's, it's, it's unfair to judge it, but um, if you want to grow traffic, you probably want to have something to entice people with to bring them into your site. And um, you can be very lucky and you can just have a site that is just evergreen forever and will work forever but that's like winning the lotto so you've got to add content in or you've got to think of a way or angles to bring people into your site so my answer basically is that the basic seo won't be enough to get a decent ranking unless you consider ranking for your own business name decent and you're going to rank for that generally anyway so there's my my two cents We're all happy with that? It was a good answer that you, you wrote on the WCA Questions Facebook group, uh, Richard. Okay. Dana Shuri Badi um, asked the question, it's titled, doesn't this lead to content duplication problems? If only we had a dollar for everybody, some, every time somebody mentions duplicate content, if we, if we can collect a dollar tax for that. Anyway, um, 
uh, translate, uh, this is one for you, Richard, uh, translate press content duplication issues. We have our site in English, German and French. Uh, we are concerned that Translate Press creates two more language pages for every page or none at all. Pages that don't have a translation automatically show href lang versions in German and uh, French, uh, but with the content still being in English. Doesn't this lead to content duplication problems uh, as the same content is now shown on three different pages? Won't Google penalise us for these? Uh, is there a solution? Can just keep scrolling and people can just read the answer. It's great. <laughs> there, there yeah. is a way in, in WPML to handle this. There's an option for not creating the pages until they've been translated. And I'd be surprised if Translate Press doesn't have a similar option that, that says only create the page once it's been translated. I can't say for sure. I don't think I've used Translate Press or maybe I did maybe a long, long time ago. But WPML does have that option. And yeah, like I said, it, it's not efficient, you know, to for it to be doing that. If you get the option to not do it, don't do it. Yeah, it's a strange situation, isn't it? Because then what happens is that there are three pages in English, and of one is the English version, what? the other two are marked up as hflang de and fr but in fact in english yeah and it's a little bit worse than that because if you've translated your boilerplate so let's say you've translated your navs and your footer etc what you then get is you'll get a german and a french a german page with german content in the in the boilerplate and an english article same thing for the french side so you get this conflicting signal now i know google won't have any problem with it like they'll just know the body content is in English and it's identical to this other page. Let's filter them out. But like, you're not doing yourself any favor with that sort of setup. Like you're just better off unpublishing those pages until you have the translations ready. You should be able to do it. I mean, I, I'd just be very surprised if Translate Press, if there isn't a way to at least to unpublish the pages, if not a setting to not do this. Excellent. Right, moving right along. And this one is from Cheryl Mykrutsikos. She, she asked, should I recommend them to do their own paid ads? She goes on to say, a client of mine has excellent organic positioning for the name of their company. Let's say it is CompuSoft. A competitor now has a paid ad that comes up first on some searches for the search term CompuSoft. Um, should I recommend that they do their own paid ads for that term, uh, even though they already come up first uh, on that term uh, uh, everywhere uh, in the organic results? Is there any way to address this? Uh, I don't think any SEO work will help as they already come up as just about every link on the search term, since it's their domain name and company name. Good answer from Tim Kappa. If their name is trademarked, they can request the ad be removed. Tim, can't you still they'll advertise against someone's trademark as long as you don't mention it? No, because you would still have to select as a keyword but is like, that how globally? would you get it to sh do you know is it globally uh, or is yeah it globally? Normally, i'm sure mm, well, I've, just that like i work for uh, like a couple of b2b companies and like i know that like they're brand no, like, you know what i think I, I have a feeling that, that, yeah, that they change the rules around this at some point to make it easier for people to to advertise against trademarks. 
but not necessarily use them in their ad copy, which would be deceptive. That's that's my guess. Yeah. Well, when do you think they changed it? Because um, I'm um, fairly certain that, that um, I, I had a, a, an issue um, back in the day. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the only criteria that uh, um, Google had was the um, it had to be um, a registered trademark. Yeah, no, I could be wrong. Like, I'm not an ads person. Like, I don't work on the on the on the ad side, but I I, I have a recollection of both using this to get ads removed, but I also have a recollection of something changing. Now, it may have changed the other way around. It may have been that you were able, in the past, to advertise against trademarks, and maybe they removed that. They 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 banned that capability. But I know there was a change around trademarks, and this is going back ten, could be even fifteen years. Um, that they 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 changed how they how adwords and trademarks were handled. It, it's an interesting one. I don't know. I'm not an ads person, so I'm 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 just interested to find out. Uh, adwords trademarks advertising policy help. Uh, we under we we recognize that third parties may properly use. We recognize that they may properly use trademarks in certain situations, such as by resellers. Uh, if a trademark owner submits a complaint and the use of the trademark in Google, uh, we will review it and may uh, enforce certain restrictions on the use of the trademark. Yeah, look at this little get out clause here. So there are three cases that you can include trademark keywords in ad title or copy. One, if you, it's your trademark. Yep. Two, you're an official reseller. Yeah. Or three, it's an informational site. <laughs> yeah, well. So you could literally just create, well, I suppose maybe it's not that easy, but you could technically then go and just create an informational page about that and have it. You, yeah. And you see also they have different, the rules for EU, uh, they have a policy mm. for trademarks and ad text and keywords applies. I, 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 just, mm. I, had, I just had a little bit of a sneaky feeling there were different rules for different locations. Like, so in the US, yeah. for instance, um, I, I think there's very different rules around what you can do with trademarks. Yeah. But uh, the, 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 the yeah. total segue, it's not related to this, this question. Um, I know that haven't there been many studies over the years that have so well they've nearly always been from the ad side, but they've always said like that you know that that using ads, adwords along with having the organic number one position resulted in more clicks. And at the same time, I work with a client who had a they had a huge problem where they their branded search fell off. And when we dug a lot more, we found out that there was a third party agency who had been employed in the Ramer region um, to come up with a, uh, to, to refine their AdWords campaigns. And they reduced, what they had done is they had managed to bring down the, the, the CPC considerably and increase the click through rate. And what they were doing was they were crowding out the competitors who were also advertising against some of their keywords. But we found that there was a, a nearly one-to-one -one correlation between when this went into place and the lower click-through rate on the organic number one rank rankings, they thought they were getting zero zero clicks. They thought that they were they were uh, the zero zero click-through was was affecting them, but it was actually it was their own ads were cannibalizing their their organic rankings. So interesting, it's, I, I it doesn't it doesn't bring more clicks by having they're just paying for clicks they would have got anyway in some cases. Yeah. So Cheryl does. She said, obviously they, you know, they rank for their own brand. Um, she doesn't say whether they have a knowledge panel being displayed for it. That could be worth your time. You know, if it doesn't have a knowledge panel, um, actually, because then you're really going to overshadow that that ad if they don't want to actually just, put, you know, bid on their own brand name. Um, that, that 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 could be a, a nice good 
piece of real estate to yeah that could be worth your time to 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 work through if they don't have it okay we move on, moving on to the next Recording that as a yes. Um, this one from Nathan Gadai. Um, it said he said uh, an old page is being archived, but the URL uh, is not being changed. Um, he said so the internal links to that page are all changed automatically. Uh, it has been redesigned as slash page ver two dot html. And uh, all of the slash page.html links change to pagever2.html. Do I need a canonical tag on the old archived page? Um, in other words, slash page.html pointing to um, slash pagever2.html. I thought about changing the directory of the old page to archive uh, slash page.html and the new one to slash page.html would be enough. I can revert the internal links back to default as slash page HTML. My God. Okay. Never change your URLs, people. Like, just don't do it. Unless you've got a really good reason, like it's... It's sort of the number one rule, like, that you should always abide by. Like, never change the URL unless you need to, unless you have to. And if you do have to change it, redirect the old URL to the new URL, because he can change his internal links, but he can't change any external links. Mm. Yeah. Like... Redesign the page and put it on the old URL and keep the same URL with a new page design on it. Like it's Thank this you. is one of those things where you can really shoot yourself in the foot. If you want a good example of sort of shooting yourself in the foot, this is one of them. Like I appreciate he's asking the question and, and good on him for trying to figure it out, but the answer is don't change your URLs. Just just don't do it. Yep. And look, I can't move on without mentioning people like Michael Martinez and Michael Stricker and Brenda Malone, uh, uh, but people who answer questions uh, on uh, the um, Dame SEO Questions Facebook group uh, through the week um, and make it such a, a valuable resource. Uh, and of course, you guys turning up every week. Um, amazing. Uh, and Michael is probably at his point also that he says he, he would prefer a redirect to the new page over canonical. And I'd agree completely with that. A, a redirect is in virtually all cases, it's, it's going to lead to better outcomes overall than a canonical will, because a canonical is a hint. And, you know, there's, if you, you want to redirect this. So he wants a 301 redirect from that old Earl to the new world. And that's how he fixes his, his problem. Yeah. Tim Hoffner asks, should I let them run into a 404? Tim said, hey, folks, we are doing a relaunch and have around 250 URLs slash sites, which will not be on the new site, slash news, slash an old news, slash news, slash another old one plus 250, he said, should I let them run into a 404 um, or is it okay to redirect them all to just slash news? I don't know if Google will punish us for redirecting so many URLs to one. Cheers, Tim. If I say anything, I'll only be agreeing with what uh, Richard says. Um, yeah, keep the ones with links and bin the rest. I think that's a, a very, very good piece of advice. What um, do you guys think of what I said about um, 
Um, if, if he wants to you know, redirect all of those URLs to a single URL, he might as well let them 404 because Google will only make them um, soft 404s anyway. Yep. So I've still got it. There, there's, there's also the possibility that Google will treat all those redirects as something that, they, that you're trying to do something they don't like and mm. you could actually harm the page you redirect to. I can't say that I've seen it, but it just wouldn't surprise me, yeah. given that redirecting was something that people tended to abuse quite a bit. Yeah, I would follow, yeah, I would follow the logic. You know, if there is an equivalent, then redirect, but if not, then it's no longer there. Simple as that. Okay, this one from Lizzie says, and oh, Lizzie said, um, will they lose the search engine optimization backlinks? Um, Lizzie has a, a client who has their website with another hosting slash SEO company with good SEO ranks with a lot of backlinks. I will be taking over the website, moving to another hosting and handling some of the, the basic SEO and outsourcing the rest. Once they stop working with the other company that handled their SEO, will they lose the SEO backlinks um, that were created by the SEO company or do the backlinks stay active since the client paid for the service? Thank you for allowing me to ask my dumb question. You're very welcome, Lizzie. It's the $64,000 question, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's... <laughs> oh, God. And this is another reason, people, why you don't buy links. Um, I think your client needs to just double-check what they agree to with these people. But, um, you know, if if they're... If that company is, you know, ethical, they wouldn't be removing them. However, if they've also used that as that site as a, some kind of giant sort of client PBN, then they would need to remove it because then you're breaking that chain of PBN. Um, and then they would have to remove it. They would just make logical sense because if you leave, that's it. But um, you need to just check what the agreement was. Um, and that's another problem of buying links, using dodgy SEO companies. And if, they, if they got there via Fiverr, um, they probably, it doesn't matter what they agreed with the um, um, SEO company that they will probably lose those links as soon as they move. It strikes me that we're assuming that these uh, these links are quality links and they've got some value to them. It mm, could be that there are yeah. thousands of them and you, you move away and lose them and they'll be diddly squat in terms of effect. You know, perhaps if you believe in negative SEO, you find things better than they were. You're going to have to do some digging. You're going to have to find. You're going to have to have a look at these links, see what they're like. You're going to have to see. You're going to have to understand what the uh, agreement is, if if they are of any use. Um, if they're if they're rubbish, don't worry. Just move. Just leave them behind. What did what was the answer? However, uh, login info. What's login info? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, they crap links. I wouldn't even worry about them. They literally sites like you know. Remember the old Ezan articles where you could just log in and just publish a yeah, Lizzie. Don't worry about them. In in fact, burn them to the ground. Yeah, uh, you might. You never know, though. I mean, like, uh, 
It, it depends what they've done. Like we don't like we're a yeah, yeah. scammers. Like, but let's say that they've written some really good content. Let's just play devil's advocate, and that these guys yeah. have okay, really so, gone out of their way yeah. to write some really good content, and that yeah. was part and parcel of the service they offered. But the content, like it, it's proprietary, it, the IP in it is yours because you paid for the service. If they gave you yeah. logins and if that content is good. I'm not suggesting you'd leave it there. You might even migrate that content onto your own site. Right? Yeah, and there, yeah, there definitely. could be opportunities there. So yeah, I'd go in, I'd look and see what did they do. Is it shit? Is it halfway decent? Is it good? See what it's doing, how mm. it's linking to you. Uh, see, did it have like, I mean, did it have any interactions? Were people commenting on it? What was happening with it? And then have a think about what you want to do with it. But first of all, you probably got to figure out is it yours or not? Like. Depends on the contract. Mm. What was in the contract? So, she she probably want to dig out and see what was what was what was promised, what was paid for, and look and see and and use some judgment to see if there's any value in what they've done. And if there isn't, grand junk it. But if there is, well, maybe you can repurpose it. Yep. Yep. Well, thank you to Perry Bernard who uh, provided an answer uh, that Lizzie yeah, was glad to receive. And uh, thank you, Richard, Tim, David, Masataki. Number 12 on our run list. Uh, it's it's um, from Faraz Ahmed. He's asked a number of questions of us and uh, I hope he's finding them useful, our answers. Um, he said, is my website considered as a your money or your life site? He said, I was wondering if a retail website having skin care, hair care and body care um, categories would be considered uh, your money or your life niche. He said, I know health does, uh, obviously, but since this is a different topic, so I asked. Tim, you're disqualified from this. You obviously don't use any of these products. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, but he looks so beautiful. Yeah. No, no he went to his pedicure recently. Yeah, no, Faraz, definitely no, I don't think so. Because I just searched body wash for eczema, which is goes slightly into, obviously, eczema can be quite bad and obviously you can't you know you can actually get medicated treatments for it and no the, the reason i say no is because they haven't um pushed up anything in terms of uh actual medical facilities in the search results and a review site came up position number one 12 body washes for eczema so yeah no it doesn't fit in it Tim's taking a Here's the curious bit that I I sort of wonder also about this your money and your life stuff. And uh, there's part of me, I have a it's just a, a suspicion that it's not it's not a binary sort of situation and there's shades of grey within this. And uh, the reason I think think this is that like, you know, if you look at certainly some of the the the, the, the quality raiders guidelines. They talk about you know what what is your money or your life, and they sort of talk about well, it, it's something that could affect people's uh, financial fortunes, you know, as in what money they have, and you would have to assume that e-commerce is generally going to be under some of this. So, you know, I think I had a question in here where I asked, you know, is this potentially an e-commerce site? Because I think that in e-commerce e in general, I don't think it's held to the same level as obviously the medical stuff but i think it is classified at some level as ymyl uh, YL, yeah I, like there is I, I think there are just different levels of this so i don't know whether you know if you're e-commerce you might be have there might be some classification in there of your money or your life um the fact that it's you know Okay, I, I get what Tim says, but I still think that maybe some of this might be 
might cross over into that. And I think like even with the latest reviews, you know, the reviews updates they've had recently where I, I also have a feeling that a lot of that stuff is sort of quite related to your money or your life in some way, even though they don't, they don't phrase it that way. So like if he's doing reviews or e-commerce, I think he's going to have a harder time. Like he's not going to be viewed as just your regular mom and pop website. That's, that's what I, that's my gut feeling. Yeah, it'd be treated differently from a site that's selling pink fluffy elephants. Um, because these areas, I mean, it straddles between the medicinal side of things and sort of lifestyle areas. So, you know, you could have a medical shampoo, for instance, for, you know, skin condition, which would be very much medicinal. Whereas, you know, if you want to have a particularly nice um, scent um, for your shampoo, then that's a totally different thing. So skincare, hair care, body care, I think it is one of those areas which I think can go either way. And, you know, if there are shades of grey, then it will really depend on the products and, of course, the queries that lead to that particular pages. Yep. Okay. Any more on this one? Uh, no, but uh, I think this is the last question. Could I go back, way back, the beginning, uh, about the images and Google Maps? I've been sort of fiddling a bit. And, okay, you know, because I've been confined at home most of the time. Um, I haven't been adding photographs for a year and a half, essentially. Um, and things seem to have changed because I remember that previously it was possible to upload images. So not Street View. Street View will be um, sort of pinned to a particular location quite exactly. But previously, I thought you could upload images directly onto maps with just the location data. But now you have to go via an entity. So you know, if I want to upload an image, um, let's say, of Wimbledon Common, then I'd have to go and find Wimbledon Common on Google Maps, go to that page, and then add via that. And I think that must have been different previously, because I do sort of remember having all pins popping up everywhere, even in Wimbledon Common, for images, not Street View images. Um, but now it's all concentrated in, or consolidated into the um, Google Maps entity. So I have hundreds of images on Wimbledon Common, or Richmond Park. Um, so unless I'm imagining things, which is entirely possible, things have changed at some point so that, you know, the location data is, I think, quite clearly um, stripped compared to what it was before. Mm -hmm. So I'm just correcting myself for my for the statements I made earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Richard Hearn, Tim Kappa, David Razam, Masataki Wasa, thank you so much for uh, your uh, anchoring uh, the, the uh, review of the answers given on the WCA Questions Facebook group. I uh, also thank people like uh, um, Michael Martinez, um, who I'm sure has got better things to do with his time, but he just devotes it. Um, to us and a couple of other places, but uh, mainly to us, and we thank him very much. Um, Brenda Malone, Michael Stricker, P P Perry Bernard, thank you. We'll be back at the same time next week to do this uh, all again, but for now, it's good night.